Hey, hello and welcome to another episode of Reef Builders Reef Therapy. I'm Jeremy, your host, and today we've got a very special guest from the UK. This is David Saxby. Um, most of you will know him. He's certainly the most talked about and most famous British fish keeper I've, I've ever known. And uh, it's a privilege to take... Well, you flatter me. I'm it's not... a privilege for you to take some time Lovely out of your you, Jeremy. I've very busy I've known each other schedule. many years. So. Yeah, so, so that's interesting. This is the third time that I've been here. The first time you had T5 lighting. Correct. Second. T5 lighting with, um, with uh, HQIs yeah. in between it. Yeah. yeah. And the, sec- the second time it was AI Souls. You've just not long taken on Aqua Illumination. Yes. AI Souls were, the, in my view, the pinnacle uh, in those days of lighting. And they, they had a, a, a very, very, very powerful depth. Yes. Ratio in the water that I've that I had come across up to that point. And we'll talk about you and your company and the products that you distribute. But AI was one of your better. Well, one one, one of the um, one of the product lines that uh, that we decided was uh, really worth bringing to the market. Uh, yeah, because at the time they didn't sell in uh, in the UK or Europe at all. Yeah, and they. Um, they actually wouldn't do it when I first approached them. They were too busy for the home market. But okay. they gave me a call a year later, uh, luckily for me, and we had a chat and got together, and we've been with them ever since. How many do you think you sold? Oh, I really can't answer that. that Quite a few. Too many to uh, count. We were, we, were, we, were, we were selling thousands at one point. Yeah, I thought you were. Yeah. Over Europe and England. It was a revolution, wasn't it? Everyone Complete ditching revolution. T5 changing to LED yeah. and unfortunately there was a large company in England that had T5 uh, not T5s um, LEDs and they you couldn't grow a matchstick with them I mean <laughs> it's, it, they, they, they ruined the reputation of LEDs for those people who had to get faith in them this was the first light that, that gave them that chance and now Aqua Illumination has a new light the Blaze we're going to talk about that later yes, as well we have, a, we have a fascinating new product that is as revolutionary as the T5 was in its day. And you've seen it and tested it and used it. I'm yet to see one, so no, I'm looking uh, forward to that. Jeremy, you haven't seen <laughs> one. Actually, I did hope you'd see one, but yeah. uh, unfortunately, it will they're, 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 they were leaving today instead of being here today. So, Are you going to put one on your big tank or several on your big tank? Um, I'm not ruling anything in or out at the moment. I'm very happy with my lighting at this moment in time, but I'm going to take a complete new look. Uh, at the moment, we're, we're, we've done a major change in the method of cal- bringing calcium to the tank and the trace elements. And when that's finished, I will then speed up to do something new on the lighting because the okay. uh, very interesting light, mm, lighting. Intriguing. OK, so we're going to talk about the tank, obviously. But first of all, just a bit about yourself. Now, I last night did some research and i dug up an old television program called fish people <laughs> in, ni- in 1989 oh and there was a very young good looking mr saxby on there yeah. talking about his tank with mario was that was that this this apartment was the, the, that no, tank or was it's it in this building but not this apartment right okay i um i had an, another apartment in this building okay and uh i was going to um uh retire god help me i don't know why but i thought of retiring uh, and life would be very nice and comfortable and then we had a huge recession and i found i I was needed to stay in england and i decided that i tried to live abroad with my wife uh well she wasn't my wife then yeah but i hated it uh, uh, hated it to a passion and i came back so just to be clear we're here in a very exclusive part of london called mayfair mayfair yes it's near mayfair yeah near mayfair it's it's westminster but yes so so your your apartment is very luxurious and very famous and i feel very privileged to uh come here and visit it so it always feels good but um just going back to that original video in 1989 so that's 34 years and you had Sailfin tanks, Scopaz tanks, tomato clowns, anemones, you had trachophilia, you had xenia, and soft, mainly soft corals, but it was really interesting because you talked about lighting being important and water movement. This is in the 80s. Yeah, so it that, was in my view. Yeah. In the 80s, it was important. You know, yeah. 
24 uh, years later. There were many things that were important, but uh, water movement certainly was one of them, I felt was very, very necessary. Yeah. Maintaining a stable environment was next. Yeah. And how do you measure what you're putting in? Yeah. And that was something I had to do. And I used to mix up salt water and drip it in, drip yes. by drip by drip, and always with a spare 100 gallon or 200 gallon. Yeah, mixed up already. Yep. Just swap them over every day. Well, that's what I saw in the video. You talked about the future would possibly be the replenishment of salts, which you're doing now, and also this kind of continuous drip, which you've just taken me out to your filter room and th 34 uh, years on. Uh, uh, it, it, it is. It is. I've I, just watched I, a continuous I drip. I, I, do you know, I hadn't really, really crossed that uh, yeah. memory but as you said it just now yeah. i thought to myself we've gone back because i call what i'm dripping in the new salt yeah yeah you know, myself that's in my mind it is the new salt yeah and because it's so successful to maintain a steady good quality tank with the knowledge we have today and the equipment we have today and the measuring ability that everybody has at their fingertips mm -hmm. to check what they're doing is correct yeah uh i i can tell you now that i'm more than more than excited at this stage in my life that there's a whole new breed of uh, reef keeping coming in yeah. that has made it much easier again, once again, because it has got much easier. And the quality of reef keeping has improved to an extent you could not believe. We could not keep in 1978. We could That's when not... I was born. What? That's when I was born, 78. Yeah, well, we could not keep a SPS coral with in a tank with any chance of success yeah. Yeah, for more than a few months. I believe yeah. you. I mean, couldn't do it. Mm. And I've watched the development from phosphate reduction to um, uh, chemical improvement with uh, trace elements and how they are needed. Um, I, I've seen, uh, it's been a chemistry lesson mm. all my life, and mm. I'm no chemist. Every day we learn. Every day, and even now, we're still making strides after stride of improvement. Yeah. And when I started D&D... &D, yes, let's talk about that. So sorry to jump in. You were a successful businessman with this hobby that you were very passionate about. Yeah. But um, Since eight. I've been keeping fish since I was eight years old. Wow. And they were two goldfish they started in a tank with... I mean, I'm very emotional about that yeah, even now, yeah, I'm yeah, telling you. Yeah. In, with seaweed, not, no, no I, yeah. I, I, pondweed, mm. not seaweed, mm. it's a seaweed game. It's a yeah. pondweed, uh, and these two fish, I adored them. I, I don't know why, I've always been attracted to keeping fish. Yeah, me too. It's your element. Water there's is your element. There's something about that that, because it's, I've got a dog, and I love my dog, yeah. and I tell you truthfully, nothing will replace my dog, yes. because the dog has different feeling. But fish also have something about them that I find very, very, very comforting. Yeah. So somehow it's kind of imprinted on you. I, I, I remember interviewing you before, and you said, you know, if you had to choose between your dog and your tank, it would be the dog. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I have to say that. Yeah, because there's a, such an uh, it's a child. The dog is a child. Mm. Uh, the fish are, are, are a hobby, a, a challenge, a, a, a relaxation uh, uh, for me. Yeah, uh, to switch off and sit and enjoy nature because it is part of the most beautiful thing nature provides. Yes. So you started. D and D. How many years ago? Twenty years, um, just under. Perhaps. I, 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 I'm, I'm told. I'm told it's about twenty years ago. Yeah. I think it's approximately twenty years. I was just about sixty when I okay. started. I'm seventy-eight now. Seventy, okay. coming to seventy-nine. So that would tally in. Yeah. But I, I started it um, very late, and I didn't realise what I was doing in terms of stuff because at that time. We were having arguments about phosphate, yeah, and calcium re reactors, yes. and and um, how to keep your nitrates down. These were the the subjects of great interest. Mm. Julian Sprung wrote a most fantastic book with Delbeck. Wonderful. Julian. 
uh, I met Julian. I went diving with Julian. He uh, he was a very knowledgeable man mm-hmm. at the time. The leading, leading. If you read his book, which I did a few years ago again, the the depth of knowledge there uh, is quite incredible. And yeah. all the things, nearly all the things that he mentioned are confront hobbyists today, and they and they, but they don't feel them because there's a cure for them. Yeah. You know, algae's everywhere. That sure. was, yeah, um, too much, too too, too much um, fighting within the tank, and not not compatible species. Things being eaten that shouldn't be eaten. Things dying because they didn't weren't kept in the right conditions. I mean, all those are the learning curve. Of- is is that why you started the company? Then obviously you got into the importance of phosphate removal, skimming. Yeah, we did skimming reactors. Removal. Um, calcium reactor I was the first with I was also the first with T5s in England yes I was also very early on with um, with uh, keeping uh, LPS and SPS properly um, yes uh, you know I can go on I can go on uh, I spent many many nights and I also uh, used I'm the first one to use a, f- a fourth person on a tank to use uh, Rafos, which yes. was a media for the water treatment plants. And you brought it in. You introduced yeah. it to I did. aquariums. I bought it in and I introduced it to uh, a person in Germany called uh, Daniel Knopp, yep. but he didn't do anything with it. And I decided to, 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 to have show people myself because I, th- I th- it was a game changer for Algis. It was. Absolute game changer. I still use it now. Yeah, me too. So yeah, so big, big, big difference. And um, the products that you distribute now, you still, you know, you've just taken me on a tour of your tank. And I spoke to someone the other day, and they were talking about influencers and tank testers. You're the ultimate influencer in that you've always tested your own products. You're still doing it now. Still talking me through the next generation of products. This tank is, you know, the ultimate test tank, and it's successful. Yeah. And it's a bit big to be a test tank. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I've had my accidents with it in terms of uh, overdosing something and uh, putting, plugging in things in the wrong plug and yeah. having eight litres of vodka and yeah. hydroxide earlier on. With the, the OK, so let's talk about that. So starting with the tank, um, everyone will know this tank. It's had millions of views on lots of different channels on YouTube. We'll show you some footage later. Um, it's an L-shaped tank. Um, kind of built into the wall, but it kind of is a wall at the same time. It is a wall. It comes under my lease plan as a wall, and therefore <laughs> the building's insurance is responsible for it, not my own home insurance. <laughs> right, OK. Um, so how big is it? I've got an inkling, but if you could take me through some of the dimensions. Do you know how big it is? Well, I, I, I think so. I can tell you. It's about uh, uh, three, uh, three metres 30 long. Yeah. Ten including feet. Including the overflow box. Just over ten feet. <laughs> Yes, okay. Well, if you're in feet, I thought a young man like you you wouldn't know what feet were. I can do both, David. I can do imperial and uh, metric. You're obviously uh, steeped in both uh, feet and inches and uh, (laughs) metric. So Our our American friends still very much work in feet and inches and gallons. Yes, they still do. It's about 10 feet, isn't it? I, I I think that's one of the things that held back Britain their their, their non decimalisation of money and, and measurements. Really? Yes, I think it's a, it made people it made it much harder for people to 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 comprehend maths properly. I think yeah, I, th- I think you might be right. Yeah, it was just it was bef- before my time. But um, so how tall is it, please? Uh, the water level is one meter one hundred and fifty high. So forty something inches, just yeah. under four feet tall. Just, just under four foot of water. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's um, it's six foot. Uh, no, well, six foot. It's two meters twenty at the end of That's the. That's nearly seven feet. Yeah. So the other L. And, so it's a ten and, by four by seven. Yeah, and then the 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 thing goes. Uh, about one meter fifty back, the, the toe of the uh, uh, of the, yeah, and then comes along and then cuts the corner off, yeah. I see. Uh, because it's angled there. I mean, it's difficult to see with the decoration of the corals, but it's angled. It's much further if you take. They're just putting food. I can in see there. some food going in. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is it's not a true L shape in the. Well, it's the, L up there. Yeah. Then it goes at an angle. Yes, and then goes straight again. Yeah, and then. 
So it's, uh, and it's of a very unusual construction. Uh, the glass is hard, uh, toughened. It is not... Um, not plate. Not... Uh, float, even. Float, well, yes, a normal uh, glass. It's toughened, laminated. It's... Um, it, the, the, the design of it, it does not have any metal frames around it. It's on a metal frame, presumably. No, it sits on a metal stand, but not on a metal frame. Right, yeah. 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 The reason for that is that um, I've got a glass strips, as you can see, round it. Yes. Yeah. And those glass strips are four mil. And I couldn't put a, glass, I couldn't put a metal frame, frame within round there because it'd be seen. Okay. So that wasn't possible to do. So there was the solution was to put stress bars round, just round the edges, and have uh, uh, stainless steel highest grade wire going across. Ah, yeah, I've yeah. seen this before. So yeah. it's um, the tension is taken the up by up cables. By the, wire, by the cables. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, build on site, presumably. You couldn't even oh, yeah, crane absolutely this in. Built yeah. on site. It has to be. Yeah. Built on site, and uh, the type of uh, uh, um, uh, silicon that we used to yeah. glue the glue the tank together. Oh, it's structural silicon. Was a structural silicon that you could have filled the tank two hours after it was used, put on. Yeah, it's a two-part silicon, which is different yeah. to the silicon that we use. It's much much stronger. So it's a chemical cure as opposed yeah. to an acetoxy cure. Yeah. Um, so this is, you know, I always smile when I see this tank. It's my favourite tank. I've told you that, and I'm not just saying it. But um, it's a dream tank for many tanks. People overuse the term dream tank. And, you know, is this your dream tank? Or would you, have you considered doing it differently? What would you do differently? Well, I haven't got the time. Yeah. I won't have the time left, unfortunately, to do another one. Uh, I would do, I would start again now. Only because um, I think the new system allows you some benefits that I never had before. Okay. But one of those benefits, I don't need so much water. And I probably um, could be able to run it without running my back room um, really? in the same way as I do today. So for people who haven't seen it, you've taken me quite some distance to a cellar. Is well, it a I, cellar? The, or? the problem around here is that there is no spare space. Yeah, because the f every foot um, that you have, you dedicate to, because of the cost of it, you so dedicate premium, to, yeah. to, to, to living. And yep. uh, I have a cellar, which used to be a wine cellar in the old days, uh, uh, underneath the road, public road, which is connected to the building. Okay. And I, uh, I was lucky to acquire one of those cellars to start with, then another one. And I have all my water processing. Yeah, all except the equipment. A skim, uh, some rafos, um and a skimmer on the tank itself in case it has to stop for a day or two. So, so ha sorry, it's just the phone. That's fine. Yeah. How, how many feet away is is the? It's my phone. So how many feet uh, yeah. away is the cellar? Well, the cellar is. Um, it's about 30 metres. 100 feet? Yeah, nearly 100 feet. So from tank to... It goes under the, under, under, out of the tank, above the ceilings, through the flat, out the back of the flat, uh, out into the open, and then underneath the road where the cellar sump's starts. 100 feet away? Yes. And you have to pump it uphill as well? No, it's pretty well level. Right, OK. The le the, but I have to pump it uh, the last four foot above the tank because the, the water height there would be the water level that the, it would understand. In other words, if it was on the floor and it was three foot of water, you count from the three foot of water up to the height you've got to pump it from, from there. So, so it hasn't got to go up much higher and it doesn't go down much. It goes down... It goes down slightly. But this is the bit you told me about that I was worried about earlier. You have to pump your sump water. But I have to pump the water in and the pump the water out. So completely sump. different to a standard aquarium with a sump underneath that's no, gravity. We basically possible. we flood it and it drops in. Yeah. You have to pump it yes. and you've got two pumps. Two pumps. And the problem with two pumps is they never pump exactly the same. No. You have to have one master, one yep. slave. Yep. And at the beginning we used to turn one off to catch up with the other one. Wow. Yeah. 
That was the, that's the today we electronically slow that pump down. The one that's master. Yes. We slow it down so the other one catches up, and when it gets to the point of catch up, the other one knows about it and speeds up. You showed me that. That was very impressive. So you're you're using a biz pumps, very high end pumps, which yes. are very controllable. Very controllable, and you could do it. You can do this with any good electronic uh, DC pump, in okay. my view, because you can control the the slowing it up and down. Most of them have. They've got to be. Uh, they've got to be a pump that can be adjusted for speed. Yep. Uh, then you can control it. So not um, not your um, average sump, uh, and it's more of a filter room. It's full of yes. It's uh, it's a, it was intended to be a storage of water and water changes, and that's what I did used to do. Mm. A lot of water changes. Yeah, but there's uh, skimmers, reactors. Yeah, you it, name it. it UVs. Had, all the water was processed in the sump room. Yes, reactor, skimmer. Um, uh, uh, calcium reactor yes i've said calcium reactor uh nitrate reactor yep uh, uh adding salt throwing away salt water all done from the sump room never never have a bucket of water removing it from the tank itself yeah um the water in here is the same water as out there and all the instructions to heat it to cool it are in here and out there in okay. other words, they travel out as a message to turn on the heaters so that, so that the tank is always carrying out the same function, inside right. and out. Right. I see. I've just seen the, the fattest fox face, rabbit fish, I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely huge. There's two of them there. So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about feeding in a bit because you've, you've, got a let, you've always got a lettuce hanging in your tank. Two. One this side, one that side. To stop the tanks having a fight, those two tanks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because otherwise, what, they, one wants to keep the other one away from... That's to stop the koi tanks from fighting. So on the subject of the koi tanks, yours was the first aquarium I ever saw what we now call a koi tank. Um, yeah. Can you remember how many years ago that was? It was using your literature. It was a long time. I, I know that the first koi tank I bought for £70. Yes. Tell us about that. £70. No, it's near Home Marine. There was a, sh a big garden centre Yeah, there. I know it, yeah. And I went in there... Uh, after visiting Home Marine, and they had these two tangs, which were had these strange markings on. And I think a big tang in those days was about twenty twenty two pounds, or maybe less. Yeah. And they had these thirty dollars tangs like that, there yeah. for seventy pounds, and I fell in love with them, and I bought them. Yeah. They were my first ones, and they were the and they were hybrids. I was told between a scopies and a and a yellow yellow. But people didn't even cover them then, did they? They were seen no, no as one, no one almost ugly. No, no one covered them. Uh, but uh, they, the, 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 there was a, a taste grew for them. And yeah. I suppose, if I'm truthful, uh, I may have been part of the influencing yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah? Uh, because I like them. You had some stunning ones. They were in your tank and, as I say, in your D&D &D literature. And um, now they're thousands of dollars. I mean, would you, would you, would you pay a lot for one now? Um, the last one I bought was 750 so it was 10 times the amount. But still, cheap, the it's there. still cheaper than now. Yes. I mean, no, 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 not now. Uh, I had a very bad experience when I changed over this tank. I had two, say, seven or eight years ago when I redid the, the actual tank and built the, this tank. Um, I had two tanks. I was offered... In those days, 3,500 for each of them, but I wanted to keep them. Is that the Vlamingi? The, what? The great big Vlamingi tanks, the Nasos? Were they no, the no, 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 no. Not, not, not the, the whale, as I called him. No, I had two tanks like I've got two here. Two koi tanks. Two koi tanks. And I kept them in the, in the temporary vat that I'd set up on the changeover of the tank. And I put them in the new tank, and they got uh, disease and died disaster and I, I just didn't want to part with them and I I, 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 I was offered 7,000 pounds for them and I wouldn't part with them why and I it's about 10,000 yeah. dollars which, which is which was a lot of money in those yeah. days yeah. yeah and I was really upset not because of I, I, I didn't have the money for them because that wasn't an issue for what was really upsetting that I, I could I could have killed them and I did but by a complete accident yeah. I don't know why but the whole tank got infected 
yes. on the changeover. Yep. Stress, velvet. I don't. Well, anyway, I couldn't. I couldn't stop them. I tried desperately. So on that subject, you know, let's talk. This is a dream tank, but it's had its fair share of mishaps and disasters, oh, like you said. Breakages. Fair. It leaked. I had. Um, well, I've, I'll give you some examples. Uh, I was sitting having an, a nice morning late breakfast when my feet were in water in the kitchen. And just prior to that, there was a big bang. No. Yeah? And uh, it was in the process. I just bought the flat next door and I was doing it. And I did a deal with my wife that I could have a big tank now that we bought the flat next door because that was her she wanted the flat next door and I said <laughs> I want a bigger tank it's a good yeah. idea we'll get the flat next door and I said that on the condition that I can have my big tank I didn't show her how big I just said a big very tank very sensible I don't uh, do that either uh, and she says yes you can do, we'll, we'll do, that's, that is very very good idea you know, that's a good find for yep. me uh, and I bought this half of the flat at the back there yeah and um I put in my new tank, and at the time, it was a frame, and there was no woodwork on it, and they just, eight weeks, they'd installed it, and uh, the stress bar went. There's a stress bar going yeah. across the, it broke, and the stress bar caused the large pain to fracture. They weren't toughened or anything yeah, in those yeah. days. Uh, it fractured and emptied the contents of my old tank on the floor in the study, and the water went all the way round to the kitchen and did about £49,000 worth of damage, which luckily I was insured for. Why? Yeah. And how many litres? We didn't discuss this. What's the volume well, of that? I, I don't... I, I, I think it's half. I think it's about 4,000. 4, Gallons. With, with 4,000 litres. four four or 5,000 litres. That's uh, the tank... There's a sump underneath it, yeah. and I've got 5,000 or 6,000 litres outside. Yeah. Yeah. So the system was about, because I had the outside then, the system was about 12,000 litres. Yeah. But yeah. what I emptied on the floor was about 5,000 litres, because the sump didn't break. Still and I a put, lot of water. what I could rescue, I put in the sump, but I, difficult to keep. But we did manage to keep, keep a few things alive. But uh, it was a terrible accident. So, tell us about the octopus. Can you tell me about the octopus? Do you yes, remember? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, when I had uh, some people from Germany come over, came over, some people I knew, and he's, he had a fish shop, very nice uh, fish shop, and he persuaded me to put a massive skimmer in. Yeah. Yes. And, um, and to rechange the tank, redo the tank, which I, I liked very much. My wife didn't, but I did the idea of that. And the live rock came in with hundreds of mantis shrimps in it. Right. Yeah. And these mantis shrimps, I mean hundreds, not one yeah. or two, hundreds. And this was proper live rock, wasn't and it? This was big pieces of live rock. Didn't you import it specially? Yes. From the Red Sea or something like that? No, yes. Uh, it, it, uh, it came from, yes, near the, it wasn't the Red Sea, but it was near the Red Sea. Yeah. So there's um, a special import just for you and your Special import. Tank. Well, he got it in, I didn't. And, uh, and we, we put it in the vats and we put it in. We, I already built the land, the scaping, in, uh, in two for rock. In in my in the, the office where, where where I had an office, and uh, planned out how it would look, and then took pictures, and we tried to get uh, him to uh, get the rocks very much like that. The problem with these bloody mantis shrimps, I'm sorry to be, was that they there was no way I could see if how to get rid of them. Yeah, no one had a, no one had an answer to that problem, and I read somewhere that uh, octopus eat crabs. Yeah, and I didn't know where they ate mantis shrimp, but I knew they ate crabs. So I got this um, this octopus, yeah. and I was very surprised because we had some yellow tangs in there, and he did try and get, catch them from time to time, but he didn't manage to catch any. But they, he used to be in there, and he used to catch these mantis shrimps. And they were beautiful, beautiful colours he used to change. And hi. I, I had to feed him on chicken as well as mantis shrimps because <laughs> the mantis shrimps didn't satisfy his need for food. And he, he really was clever. I mean, th these animals are yeah, very clever. They're amazing, aren't they? Yeah. They're, he sees me and he goes to the corner of the tank and 
he puts his tentacle up on the waving it around trying to attract my attention because he wants he wants some chicken and what you do is you give him chicken but if you don't give him chicken he goes over to his hole where he lives and he starts pulling the rocks about you know, throwing them around he, he's got a temper on him you know? but uh, the mantis shrimp slowly disappeared and time came to get him out because he was getting bigger and bigger and I thought you know we can't have him too any much longer so I offered him to uh, London Aquarium at the time and London Aquarium were happy to have him but how do you catch him yep. and there laid a the real problem so I, uh, I, I was told that there was a very, very good octopus catcher, they said, who would catch this octopus with no problem at all, who came along with a drain pipe and a stick, and he tried, and he couldn't catch him. He just couldn't catch him. And I was watching a film on the television about these octopuses and things in the sea and they catch them with red tomatoes on a string and, and, but they eat like they, their favourite food is crab yep. yeah. so I said well I'll go to a rock pond down on, near, near Brighton and I'll look there and I'll see if I can find some big crabs and I did mm. and I tied them up on a string mm. waved it in front of him on the string and off he went and got a hold of it I, we got the net underneath him after so many tries before a lot of black ink and out he came got him out put him in the thing and the London Aquarium had him he didn't live more than a year or two after that because they only yeah. lived three short lived yeah. Yeah, yeah short lifespan so and I have some actually I was looking the other day I think I've got some pictures of that now still of that um, I found them the other day but wonderful creatures yeah and really worthwhile keeping but unsustainable if you want a reef tank because it ends up as a rubble tank yeah. absolutely yeah yeah so i've seen um this tank morph and change although its shape has stayed similar i mean this is um like you say you're one of the first to have acropora a long time ago yeah. And that was probably based on what a calcium reactor or and metal halide lights and metal halide, um, calcium reactor, hydroxide at the and time. This was as decades well. ago, I wasn't put it? Both hydroxide and uh, calcium reactor together. Yeah. Uh, everybody said that uh, you can't. You're getting too much phosphate out of the calcium. You did at the beginning. Yeah. It took time before we found the answer to that, but it wasn't the complete answer. But it was most of the answer. Used hydroxide to try and match to keep the pH up because of the CO2 going in. Yeah. Yeah. And it worked. And I used to do a lot of water changes, so CO2 was never a problem. CO2 has become an issue for me uh, on the on on having a calcium reactor and a nitrate uh, reactor and saturated pH water going into the tank from yep. the, the way the calcium reactors work today. So my nitrate and phosphates uh, were both high. Phosphate was easy. Yep. Put more material. Yeah. Yep. But nitrate um, it was a problem and the reactor dealt with it and I managed it but pH was not a problem with even with those with good water changes regularly every three weeks and if it was a problem I didn't see it yeah it it certainly became a problem um didn't you say the calc water did something to your substrate what did yeah that was that was a very that was a very interesting uh, problem the problem, there were several ways to keep uh, nitrates down. One was a, called a plenum. Yes, yep. And that was a, basically a, uh, a bed of, uh, of, of coral gravel mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, with a, an inch of free flowing water underneath yep. the, I remember. the bed. And the theory goes that the pH is very low in that water because it doesn't move around. And um, and it, uh, it it gobbles up the, the any water that does get there. The nitrate is gobbled up by the the by the by uh, the anaerobic uh, bacteria. Anaerobic yep. bacteria, quite yep. right, uh, which uh, converts it uh, converts 
the nitrate into oxygen for us at the O part of NO2 for, for its survival. And uh, that, I tried it. So you had a plenum in that tank? I had, had a plenum many years ago. That must I have did. been like a tonne of sand. Um, I can't remember, but, you know, th- that was an initial tonne of sand. Yeah. I had more than a tonne of rock in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. But the problem with that, when you used calcium hydroxide, which, you know, I discovered, other people didn't seem to ever mention it, was that the calcium, rock, uh, calcium hydroxide acted as a lime and some made the the gravel into a concrete. <laughs> so, so you, you ended a six up inch deep block you, of concrete. You, you, you ended up with no water flow between the two layers and yeah. a and, and and a solid lump of concrete doing nothing. Yeah. And you had to dig it out presumably. Yeah, start again. getting it out was a problem and even in the tank itself where you had a a, a, bit, a bit of sand bed or a bad coal. So hydroxide for me became a no no. Okay. Yeah. It also turned the Rafos brick hard right. as well when you mixed it. So the answer there was told to put uh, uh, coral sand again, calcium, calcium coral uh, uh, gravel yep. Yep. in the in the phosphate reactor at the time. Well, it wasn't a fluidized reactor; it was just a yep. canister on the top and the bottom. So that, but that didn't seem to make much difference uh, because j- just to be clear with the delta products that you distribute you sell calcium reactors calc wasser reactors but now you're going away from calcium reactors and even salt so you distribute the D and salt yeah but of course uh, when i went away from halides i uh, i went on to leds yeah yes or T5s first, the yeah. LEDs, I distributed them. And when yeah. the T5s came out, I didn't hesitate to... You're to, one of the to, first to, to, to like Yes, it. to drop T5s when yeah. uh, LEDs came out, as they dropped naturally. They dropped yeah. naturally. Yeah. I didn't force the change, yeah. but I saw it coming. Yeah. So I always had the replacement. Yeah. Always, I've done it again now. I wanted to have a bad... I wanted to deal with chemicals. Yeah. I, I felt they were very, very important. But I always said... You test first and you dose afterwards. Yeah, there's no now, point in dosing blind. Well, now, I cannot understand, and there's a lot of people doing it, who dose blind. Yeah. Or they certainly did do it. And there's a lot less now because they've got availability to... And I've had um, several discussions with many various people in the industry about this problem mm. and none of them seemed to think it was important mm. you just dump the stuff in you've got a formula and just dump it in mm. uh, not my not my way yeah okay so you're obviously still into your kind of gadgets and technology and willing to try these new things and you as you as a man who sells calcium reactors calcium reactors and salt have recently changed all that because now you're doing... I still do calcium reactors, not uh, um, skimmers. Yes, no. absolutely, yeah. Skimmers, Always do skimmers. Skimmers haven't been, been barred yet. No. Nope. Though I think the skimming has become less or you get more value from your skimmer because of the, of the fleet uh, roll, roller mats. Roller the, filters, the, oh yeah. Dear, don't let me say roller mat. You, that you, distribute, clarity. you distribute the clarity. So yeah. David is the man behind the clarity. We yeah. all know it. We all use it. This is yeah. this is the man, and you have clarities on this. Well, they're, <laughs> only in testing. They're they're there for development. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, I I try to run every product that we sell. I want to handle it myself. Yeah, it's very important because a hobbyist buys so many things three times. I can't tell you. Mm. He gets a bad first one, mm. but then he's learnt, and then he has to go out and spend his money again, and he still hasn't got the best many times. And then after that, he gives up and he buys the one that really works. Yep. I've seen it time and time and time again. Yep. Yep. And so it becomes a much more expensive hobby than it already is. Absolutely. So, just for the record, you're now not changing the water in this huge tank. Well, that's a, that's a step I took um, uh, for some long time now. As I've got more and more tests, I've been doing tests. Yep. I've been adding the missing uh, ingredients myself. ICP tests. ICP from the IP. Yep. I've been doing them every single week okay. on the tank. And 
And those IPP tests were the basis upon which I formulated what I put in. Yeah. And then I decided I would not have to change water so much because they came up pretty regularly. I didn't, I learned, I had a very quick feel. I, I made a mixture of KH buffer when I put on my RAFOS because that would drop a third of a DKH when I put that in. I noticed it, so I had the right amount to do. So all the things, molybdenum I dosed because it gets chewed up when with the nitrate reactor well, i never realized that before but measuring things you find out what's yeah. strontium i saw suddenly how important strontium was because yeah. they t- everything grew with strontium and i can go on you yeah. know magnesium calcium it is quite revelatory well, isn't it but when when you do an icp test and realize that certain key elements are missing or certain ones are built up and to correct them and to see the difference. Now, I commented before we started recording, I've seen this tank, as I say, certainly over a 10-year period, probably longer, almost 20 years. I've never seen it as full with corals as it is now. It's always been full of corals, but the colonies are much larger than they have been before. It looks much more grown in. And this you're putting down to ICP testing, improving on any... Part one and part two... Of, uh, or pH uh, uh, enhancer yeah. has doubled the rate of growth in this yeah. tank. Doubled it. I I can absolutely assure you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I ha- I was already watching the KH. I had a, 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 a cage machine. Yeah. Not the one now, but a, a prototype one. Yes. Yes. And I was running, and that already started to help me see what growth would you get when you're yeah. dosing DKH back into the tank. Yeah. And I've done that again. I still do it now with a new one. We just bought out one that we have been developing for a year and a half to get it technically sound. This is the KH manager. KH manager been deeply involved in that in yep. that in that uh, in the growth of that and there's one running on this tank obviously. well i've now got one but i before if you'd have come here about five weeks ago i used to have a prototype one as well yep. that i had made in england which we're doing and experimenting right. with to make sure that to find out exactly the technical problems that you come across yeah for instance we we have you can have up to four or five washers on our machine to make sure you put in exact uh, they've got Instead of having counting the the dosing pump, how much it drops in of the acid, we have a, a, a an optical sensor, two of them, to make sure that the the it counts the exact amount of uh, acid or reagent, which is an acid that goes in, is exactly correct to get the, ma- the dead right DKH. Okay. And uh, and all these things are very very important. The, the machine, the quality of the machine, the quality of the dosing pumps. I, I've used one of our stepper motors, which I regard for its size and its performance as pinnacle performer. It Who is, makes them? Uh, Kamoa make it for us. Kamoa, yeah. Yeah. They're a pinnacle performer, I, I, I assure you. Uh, I, I've, you can run it 24-7. Yep. I, I'm dripping in. I've got a big enough system to be lucky enough to drip in on a constant, very slow basis. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, and, the, and the two part you're talking about, this is the reef elements, yes. parts one and two. And there's one called pH plus, yes. which I also use. And it's, yeah. I gave it um, one of our top 10 products on reef builders on the website because I've been trying it for at least six months. I've never known a product positively affect ph in such a concentrate form before so rapidly and so effectively 100 percent agree within four weeks from being around eight at the best yes yeah it went up to 8.3 8.4 yeah yeah me too yeah 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 exactly that and that was a massive difference on this tank yeah yeah growth growth well one of the things is growth there are other things that i noticed that the the um the um Less nuisance algae. What's the, what do you call that brown? The, oh, the diatoms, diatoms and the cyano and uh, um, cyano. dinoflagellates. Yeah. All the macro, the, 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 the hair algae that were concentrated because of low pH, yeah. they, got, they got knocked on the head now. Yeah. They're nearly all gone yeah. Yeah, around the system. So the, the, uh, the corals look much healthier. I'm just about to dose the macro elements in a block together. Okay. Yeah, and I'll be monitoring them on the tests. This is the beauty of the system, is that 
you can look at what's happening and by your very actions you can know I, I used to use a pair of large pincers are they called mm -hmm. would you call them pincers yeah you know and I promise you that every time I put those in the tank and I didn't do that that often to grab a little small this or small that the zinc went in and yeah. I saw it yeah yeah and that's how you know what you're doing you just don't realize it yeah mm. what you've got I also know that a lot of shafts on a lot of pumps, mm. not ours, mm. not the ones we're involved with, they've got uh, tungsten, and yep. you see it clearly on the pits. Yeah, beware yep. stainless steel so shafts, yeah. You, so you have, with this is testing, testing and testing. It's so good. So yep. that is, that's your, you now prescribe to regular ICP testing, um, dosing based on that test and only based on the test. Yeah. Um, and based on the previous ones and the one you just received because yeah. you see the history you see the history yeah. and you've removed the calcium reactor or you're going to remove it it's gone it's gone I so took it out so no more carbonic acid no, no more old school no, CO2 no more CO2 bottles yeah. I'm doing the planet of good Too service far. there and, and these um, these reservoirs you've got I mean I've got 2.5 litre jugs drums of this part one and two and yours are what seven, uh, seven uh, they're, they're 97 litres 97 which litres yeah, yeah. which is what 30 gallon drums of uh, this well, if you do, you do highly four, caustic four, pH four, stuff four, four, uh, four and a half gallons so you can divide it yeah, right yeah. Um, and it, it's this isn't an advert for your company by the way but the growth is noticeable I get this on mine you can see the white growth tips absolutely um, you see the white rims on the Montes you see it on the um, acros and the style offers and it's um, that's the that's the joy of high pH and constant uh, not constantly high pH but um, preventing stable. low pH yeah stable pH yeah because yeah. it's, it's much more stable now yeah it, it moves a little bit more but it's stable you know when it's it does it in a regular yeah. rhythm it irons out the lows i find in my tank i was getting nighttime lows when all my corals um the photosynthesis is reversed i think that was pushing the uh the ph down from co2 i've got no macroalgae in there but um this from monitoring it, it ironed out my nighttime lows and now the lowest mine goes at night is 8.2 when it used to go below eight yeah i go from 8.2 to 8.4 yeah me too uh, uh, in, on this yeah. And I'm told I can get it high, but I'm not even going to try. No, I've tried 8.6. You're gonna, you're there? I've done it. You're at 8.6? No, I'm at 8.4 8. today, but I've done 8.6. Oh, I've not got there. I haven't even... And I, I will do, I'm sure, but I don't want to do it yet. I I want to do, do, dose the macro elements yeah. next. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be... I've got two dosing pumps now mm -hmm. to dose those regularly, minute quantities, every day. Okay. So that's my next attempt. At, um, and I put iodine in uh, myself, uh, one or two mil. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, up to, uh, because the iodine hasn't, it's fluctuated down. Because you have to remove water from the system, salt water from the system. Yeah. After, because my salinity is, was going higher and higher. Yes. And now, um, I remove water, so I have to throw salt water away, not put it in, throw it away, yeah. because the chemicals are the new salt. Yeah, so they're pushing the salinity up. Correct. Not a huge amount, No, but no, gradually. no. Yeah. But on the reef sediments test, mm. at this moment of time, they tell you the salinity of the tests they mm. do. And, and from that, if you give them the right amount of of your tank uh, literage mm. they'll tell you in the future it's not happened yet but it will be coming they'll tell you exactly the amount of water you should be throwing away okay for, yeah uh, to keep it stable okay that's worth looking out for um so just back to the livestock obviously there's a mix of predominantly hard corals um mainly sps there's some lps we talked about a butterfly fish a mitratus butterfly that you've put in there and it's been a problem hasn't it it's eating the lobos well, the track problem a problem within proportion it's eats 
some brains, but not others. Yeah. I, it seems to, it does get well fed, and it still eats some brains, but not others. And it leaves my, I mean, I've got, I don't know, they're trachophilus for me. I don't know what you call them because they've changed the names. Yeah. Do you see the red and. Uh, oh, they're Lobos now, yeah. Lobos now. Yeah. 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 The, those two there. Yeah. It doesn't touch them. They've been in there three years. He's never touched them. Sure. Yeah. See the green one, the brain down the bottom? Yeah. Never touches it. Not, not, a, not a bite. But another round the corner, the same coral, yep. he's eaten it virtually. Always leaves a piece for testing. <laughs> so what are you going to do? How are you going to get him out? Oh, very easy. you got a trap? Uh, I've got a very special trap. Mm. I've okay. got it. I, I, have you, I, I haven't shown it to you. Would you no. like to see it? Um, I would. I'll see it afterwards if that's okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah I would love uh, to see it. Because it, it's just in, in the kitchen, but it's a very interesting trap. Okay. I think I can catch nearly every fish in it. Wow. Because that's the other question I was going to ask you. This tank's four feet deep. There's a four foot deep tank that I'm working on with a kind of friend stroke colleague of mine. And I find it really difficult to work in. How do you fasten a coral onto a rock when it's three feet down what's your how do you do it do you just have to place it or do you actually stick it on no i use uh, well you can use um our reef putty you yeah. can uh but you just hold it on for a period i of time. have iron rods stainless steel iron rods right and they're very heavy yeah and they're bent in certain shapes and they i just put the, the coral there and prop plop them up the coral ah, top and then, the, tip. Then, they, then it goes off on, on its own so the weight uh, of the rod holds it in place yeah well i use even the rod i'll use the rod to uh, as a support underneath it uh, if i have to so all these corals have been gr- glued in afterwards yeah yeah and i've done it do it with rods so i'll have a rod leaning on on the on the stress bar up there going down there yeah and another one there there so there's two coming down and then i'll put that in the position i want it to and i use uh underwater epoxy resin yeah yeah which is a very it's looser than uh, the putty and i just put it on the coral itself leave the coral to sit there and that will be there fastened it grips the rock like like steel right so there's nothing i can't stick somewhere yeah anywhere there i've got all these fashion stainless steel rods i got them they're actually next to the skimmer but you didn't <laughs> see them and i use them all the time and, and i've had them many years and not, the, not a not not a mark of rust on them i mean it and the same with how you deal you know we you said it needs a trim it almost does i mean this tank is huge but the corals are pushing towards the front glass there are i mean the Corlastria, the uh, candy cane that you said is like a pest. You've got hundreds and hundreds of heads in it, the, the green one. And, yeah. um, so you're going to have to remove them. I mean, is it is it long-reach clippers? I mean... I've got them, but I've not, I've not touched it. I, um, I, 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 I always manage to get rid of things. I, I've got these rods and I just tap it. Yeah. Breaks, get right. it out. Yeah. It's, um, it doesn't look nice for a month. But very quickly, I've got a serrated knife on a long plastic stick. I trim the edge of all the red corals. I've done it constantly, but you wouldn't know that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you? I, re- I took one edge off last week, and you can't see it now. No. It's gone already growing back. No, it's overgrown. And I've always liked how natural this tank looks, and we share the kind of love of overgrown, kind of entangled yes, corals. I love that. looks natural, doesn't it? It, it is a reef. Yeah. It's yeah. what's going on. I think there are so many reef tanks now with tiny frags that just look... They look rubbish. Yeah, but the fun of growing... I, I put a tiny frag... Uh, can you see him from here? I can see a red gonny. No. You see the red the red gonopora here? Yeah. Behind it is a... Oh, a chalice. A chalice. Yeah. I just stuck that in there. Blob of glue. Put it down. Leave it. It's done. Now it's climbing all over the rock. Yeah. Uh, and it's fine. Yeah. So I glue a lot of things in. Um, you know, all these corals on the edge are all glued. Yeah. And then they just stay there. So... I, um, that bubble coral has been glued in years ago. Yeah. And, it, and a, to be honest, it was a rescue bubble coral that somebody had in the shop and I bought it for nothing. And it's it was about that size and it was nearly dead and I put it there and I left it there. And look at it today. It's yeah. huge. Yeah. That's what happens. Uh, yeah. The right conditions, you grow and grow. Uh, um, and what, what I like about this tank, the way it's aquascaped and the large plates... Um, 
it actually creates a lot of shade. It's brightly lit, but the shade, you can see how important it is to the fish and how, how often they use the other half of the reef, the underside, to get yeah. out of each other's way and to kind of take a rest or to feed or, you know, it's a whole parallel kind of universe of, of aquascape underneath. Well, there are some fish that permanently live under there. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I could, I'll show you some. I, I think I've seen it previously. You had some kind of deep water anthias yes, which were yes, under there. Yes, yeah, it yeah. just makes a, makes there, a really big there. difference. Really big. And we were talking about the food. So you've got lettuce. And you. what else do you feed these fish? Do you feed them any dry foods or is it no just frozen? No dry foods. Just lettuce, frozen. nori, and uh, frozen food, which every two months yeah. I have these industrial packaged brine shrimp, Pacific krill, absolute krill, um, brine shrimp, mysis, lobster eggs, all put in a big cauldron. Yep. Crushed till they nearly melted. Not still semi frozen, but nearly. And then put into ice cubes, which is a half a morning's work from seven o'clock maybe to eleven. Yeah. Because uh, it's a it's a it's an easy job to put the stuff in the big pots, mm. but to get it out, I I sieve it all to get rid of all the juices, to cut down the phosphate, and yeah. it does that does cut down the phosphate yeah. because I know by how much phosphate remover I use yeah, when I, I don't do it. Yeah. No? Yeah. So it's just frozen food. How many times a day are they fed? How many what? How many times do you feed them? Five times a day. Five times a day. Yeah, and live shrimps. The river shrimp, the live river yeah, shrimp. I've yeah, I've got a whole community out there of river shrimp. Yeah, and that makes a difference. I remember I came in last time, and even the powder blue tang was eating river shrimp. And oh, the tangs eat river shrimp. Yeah. Every fish nearly eats them. It Every makes... fish. And I tell you, which is interesting, the cleaner fish eat the lettuce. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. You'll see them in it sometimes picking away. And so these two koi tangs, they got get on with each other, or do they chase each other? Well, originally, there was only one. Yeah. Yeah. And I had to put them together, and I tried, and there was a disaster. And then I caught them both and put them outside together, mm. um, and they were fine. Then I separated them outside to keep them away from each other for a period and then I put them both together back in here now whether that helps or doesn't but they've now got to a point where they're balanced fighting each other mm -hmm. and they don't do each other damage as you can see there's yeah. no damage on them no they have a little chase but I mean I've got two Nassau tanks they come from different areas but one was a male before but he gave up and the other one is a male yeah and he's still and they don't fight they used to they the, the balance comes normally. Rarely have I seen a fish kill. There is an episode that will come. I know it will come because I've seen it several times where the tangs, the yellow tangs themselves, decide it's a time they had a fight. Yes. Now, tell me about this. This was the first tank I ever saw shoals of yellow tangs over 20 years ago, probably 20 years ago. And you told me then that they eventually they kill each other. Yes. Every time. Every time. And they'll do it again. Wow. They're not big enough yet, a little bit bigger, and they will pick on one, yep. and they all kill that one. And then one of the ones that was in that bunch killing everyone yep. will be picked on, yep. just one, and they'll kill that one. And even in a tank like that, that's 10 yeah. feet one way and 7 feet it's, the other I, way? It's, I don't think it's got anything to do with the tank. It's to do with the, they're looking, they look They look to form a, a, a partnership in the end yep. of tanks that are very healthy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because they always normally look like they pick on the weakest. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes that weak one doesn't grow. And the other. So what I do when that happens, mind you, it's much harder now because I don't know because they ban them for a period. Yeah. I think they're coming back, aren't they, or something I heard? We or, hope so. Or they're certainly home... Uh, 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 yeah, you can get tank Captive bread ones, bread yeah. ones now. Yeah. Um, when, w when these get to that stage, I will uh, catch a few. And they're very easy to catch because mm. they, they, a mirror will in, in the trap. You'll see it will all attract them. They go in. They go anywhere. They're very tame fish. It's not a problem. I'll catch a few. I'll put them outside, mm. away from the main tank, mm. and um, 
when, but only after they started this episode of Killing. And I normally can save the one that's under attack because yep. he's bullied so much that he's frightened to move around. You can get him out, especially at night when the lights have been off for a period. You just turn them on and you catch him. And that's the only way to catch some fish. You have to wait till it's dark and then know where he is, where he sleeps, and then have a go at catching him. He'll even swim out of where he sleeps without seeing where he's going because he just wants, he knows there's something to, wow. to So, and then you can scoop him up. I've done that many times now, but not as easy now as it was. So I've got a, uh, a question for you from a viewer. Um, what's the most expensive fish you've ever bought? I, I don't think I've ever paid more than seven or eight hundred pounds for a fish. I don't think so. I'm just trying to think. I mean, I've paid four fifty five hundred for some some fish. Um, but not thousands. I've never paid thousands for fish. There's no never. I, I've been offered thousands for fish, but I've never paid. Um, the Mauritius Tang. Yep. I bought some for four hundred pounds, and people paid me sixteen hundred at one stage. Whether they're still that price, I don't know. Yeah, I've, um, uh, it's, uh, I got a feminist dress in there, and I like feminist dresses, so and I like um, some of the antiers, yeah. and they probably are the most expensive fish. Um, I've now got to a point where I'm, I've got only three or four antis of that. I'm going to put more antis in when I, as I settle this tank down a bit more. I've know. always enjoyed the antis in your tank, and this time you haven't got so many, I noticed. No, I haven't. And one of the reasons I haven't is because they've been... They, I think there's a, a, one of those big worms in there. I never see a dead fish, though. Yeah. So they just disappear, and yeah. I don't know where they go. Yeah. Mm. And I've got a feeling there's, um, but they, you know, the big fish never get attacked. Some of the other, blue eyes, I've got loads of blue eyes in there, but they've paired up. Yeah. They, if you oh, look, yeah, I've seen pair, them, yeah. There are pairs everywhere. In the coral heads. I've got to put another shoal in, but you only can get a shoal when you put them in small. Pairs of ghost cardinals in the, um, in the Montepora Digitata, that's really cool. Oh, you've got yellowtail um, rasses as well. There, one of them's changing into a male. Of those. Oh, great! That that's really good to see. I don't often see well, the, there. Uh, you can see it. I think it's just there with the other two, ye two yellow two females. females. Yeah. Um, do, uh, that's something else I noted in in that video from 1989. You had square spot anthias even in the 80s. I bet they were hard to keep then. I don't think fish are so hard to keep in a good reef tank. I think they're harder to keep when you haven't got one. When it's a bear tank or yeah. a fish tank. I agree. Yeah. I, I think a good reef tank agree. is not so hard to keep. I mean, I've had this yellow tile fish in. You see him on the corner there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's waiting for food at six o'clock. What's the time now? Um, 20 to 7. Right. Well, he's had his food, so he's not going to get any more to nine o'clock. Mm. But he normally comes out, and we always put the food in the other side, and he's round there when it's time for food. Yeah. And he's been there a very many years. But I've had other tile fish, and they haven't survived. Now, they've either jumped out somewhere where I can't find them. Yeah. Or they haven't survived for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know. Um, Have you had any favourite fish over the years? Oh, any standout ones? Beautiful fish over the years, yeah beautiful fish so what happened to the um the large naso tang the oh he's fine he's still alive he's in he rehomed is he oh yeah right yeah. he was a lovely boy yeah very yeah. very big fish but again breaking corals mm. he gets to a size where he can't help but knock it himself in that size tank can't help this knock it into a few corals yeah as i say it's, it's amazing how little room is left in a 10 foot by 7 foot tank because the whole thing is reef it's quite amazing um, just touching on the equipment just one more time you still vodka dose yes well I don't vodka dose I feed the nitrate filter with vodka I don't right I don't uh, vodka dose itself okay and what nitrate level do you run at what's good for you well I mentioned the other day it was about 10 
10. I aim for about 10. It's hard to get these days. I actually need to add some. There's the male yellow tail there. See him? Oh, He's got yeah. a yellow spot. Yeah. That's the male. I just coming. saw Turn into the male. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. It has um, come back round again, yeah. So, so, so the nitrate, you aim for about 10. Um, KH, you're going quite low these days. I mean... Seven. Now, back in the day, a long time ago, you'd have well, aimed for a much higher KH. KH. Have, um, there was one person told you have 14, I remember. Yeah. Um, I measured the C several times. Yeah. And I see maximum of eight. Okay. Uh, but more often, seven, seven point three, something like that. Okay, and you're managing that with the KH manager yes. and the two parts. Well, eventually you're going to pair them up, aren't you? You're going they to are paired up now. The, right. uh, the, the KH manager yeah. is in control now. Yeah, I'm putting I'm putting that in now. The the I'm dose, It's still it. it uh, I put Rafos in yesterday. The at six o'clock yesterday evening. PH went below seven, just below seven, and then yeah. started dosing. Yeah, the KH. The KH, I yeah. said the PH. Yeah. The KH, I'm, you know, I'm kidding. This is a problem when you get older. <laughs> KH and PH became the same, and then too many things become the same. That's <laughs> yeah. the problem. Yeah. Um, one thing I've always noted and enjoyed is that despite the very strong flow in this tank, there aren't any wave-making pumps on display. Well, the weight may be pumps in the terms that the pumps are go, uh, going uh, full speed, slow speed, full speed, slow speed. But, but they're, they're all on closed loops. Closed loops. And they always have been, haven't they? I can't see another solution unless you want wires in the tank and to see where you... And, not, and now I can... Uh, yesterday, one of the shafts on the, uh, on the Abyss pump broke. Right. It's been going five years. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. I changed it over in two seconds. I, I've got them. I just undo the, the the valve on the top of them, close the valve off first, though, yeah, and then just put the new pump in place and start it up straight away on the controller. It's, uh, it's a two-second job. Yeah, but it just, again, just adds to that reef effect, not having all the electricals on show. I, I don't like... I've got, in my frag tank, I've got, yes, I've got an AI. It's Nero's, yeah. Nero. Yeah. I like that pump. It's, a, it's an amazingly clean little pump. Yeah, if you could get enough of them, it would be nice. But I think they will come now back into full supply. Okay. They are... The supply of, that, of, of AI is not... It's just been a disaster, in my view. It's the only product we've had real trouble getting. Um, and it's, it's to do with re-engineering and chips missing, or I don't know. That any, but now, I think... We're about to come out of the desert okay. and get into the green grass fields now and get them more of them. There's a new one coming out, seven. I hope by the a Nero seven. Yeah, exclusive reef builds exclusive Nero seven. Sorry, what's exclusive? That's news. What for reef builders? Yeah, Nero seven. Well, wow. okay. Well, it's you don't know when it'll be here. We've only got the three and the five. That's that's a new model. Yes. Well, okay. You, know, you spotted that, but I'm, uh, for me, they were meant to be here in March. But, oh, I see. Yeah. But, so they're actually behind. Oh, no, no, is anything in front from my <laughs> eye? Anything? I mean, you you actually put out the KH uh, yep. uh, manager yep. for America. I've done both. Ameri KH Carer, KH Manager. Coral View KH Carer, and yours is KH Manager. Yes, but they're different machines. Oh, yes, I understand. Well, they are different machines yeah. because I would not accept the original machine. Mm. I told them what I wanted, and they built it accordingly. So, for UK and Europe, you're saying yours is tweaked and a different, a different. It may look Absolutely. similar, but it's different. They yeah. look similar, yeah. Um, but we, whether they passed it over to America, so they've done the software. Yeah, I don't know, but it's certainly the first ones were not the same. Okay. Um, so, on the subject of AI, can we talk about the blade? What would you like to know about? Well, by the way, what is the time? Because I'm not first. I want to ring the restaurant. Tell them. Um, it's quarter to seven. We've got. No, about, that's fine. It's five minutes down the road. We've got about ten minutes left. Okay, not a problem. Um, so the blade, it's AI's first light bar. A different, <laughs> a, di yeah. a different thing to the Hydra, the thirty-two and the sixty-four. This is it's. It's been three years in the making. Do you know what, David? I was told a long time ago they were working on a bar. So I believe you when you say that. I asked for a bar 
to be made yeah. with full controllability, yeah, like they do on their lights, and one that was exactly the same with no controllability. Yeah. Yeah. I asked for that three and a half years ago. Right. Minimum. Yeah. Minimum. And they'll tell you that they stopped the development for one point. But to be fair, yeah, the new bar that they bought out is not a bar in the old sense that yeah. we were expecting. Yeah. That's why I asked for full controllability, because I mm. wanted a bar that was fully controllable so it could be the yeah, yeah. A, a big enough to be... Because the... The thing about the high, uh, the HD is not drive. high definition. Yeah. Yes, it's hyperdrive. Yeah. Because you can move power from one LED to the other to increase its power to give out more light without using more electricity on your ballast. Yes. Yeah. And electricity today is a very important cost. Very important. This new bar, not only is it different in its use of power because it is the same as an HD it has that Okay. it has a new colour sequence in it and because the light has been designed with a, these very new modern chips there are less shadow ok light appears to come from a much wider spectrum yeah the whole thing acts like a lens doesn't it the whole underside it actually moves the light well, sideways when you have two bars yeah you're crossing over and therefore you're getting light yep. on both sides yep. and it brings the light is very very thinly spread like T5 it's a very similar effect to T5 yep. very similar so the, these and, are but the colours are new yeah the, the, the chip actually reflects on the corals in a newer colour than the previous and which is very pleasant so if you're looking for extra colour, you can put them on an existing yeah. uh, uh, T64 uh, or 20, yeah. uh, 30, 30, 32. You can put them on there uh, next to them, and you will you will get a, a very beautiful colours, more beautiful than you can imagine. Yeah, has it got quite a strong violet in it? It's yes, because it's more like the older Tinic. Yeah. Years ago, Arcadia asked me if I had any choice of light from them because I used to use their lights yep. what would be the light I would like to see and I said I cannot understand why you haven't built big artinic tubes mm. that would be capable of being spread across a tank and getting the fluorescence because the artinic used to have a fluorescence it did and they told me it wasn't possible to produce the artinic on a long term basis it would go Mm. But the LEDs, they've got that, that wonderful fluorescent colours mm. in them. And for me, you go to this tank at nine o'clock at night, yep. it looks gorgeous. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. The fluorescents come out very much out. Okay, so we definitely look forward to using the uh, blade. That would be great. Yeah, the blade is a very interesting mm. light. It's completely new. I, I think it's as new as the T5 was mm. to the T8. Yeah. And it's controllable in that you can control the spectrum, whereas some other light bars at the moment you can't do yeah, that. They're not light bars. They're 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 light they're light enhancers. They're not light bars in the sense. So so what you're saying? Th this is a standalone light. You could never light your tank on those light bars that are produced at the moment. I I haven't seen one where there's enough power. Yet yeah, you could LPS, not a problem. Yeah, yeah. SPS not possible long term I don't think I, I, I have to see it yeah. I mean, well, one thing I've noticed if you put an HQR on this tank yeah. yeah you couldn't grow that style of pour down there yeah. you couldn't grow it down there it wouldn't, it wouldn't grow it yeah. wouldn't be happy yet with the LEDs it's totally happy mm. what is the, why did the HQI not work down there mm. you have to answer that because I don't know the reason have you got yeah. the stock lenses on the um, Hydras are you running 64s and 32s or are you running the old 26s? No, no, no. I've got the old 26s. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the 26s and 52s. Mm. They are. However, they aren't lenses. The soles where you change the lenses. Yeah. You change yeah. The lenses. 
Um, but I have got new ones up there as well. Whenever a light goes now, yep. I send it back for refurbishing, keep it back, and for a good cause, we'll, I'll give it away to someone. Yep. yep. Um, at the moment, um, I'm changing them over slowly. But, but if only when one goes, I just pop it as 20. Um, we're just changing over to, um, um, I don't know what you call it for years. What, uh, what, what, uh, Ecotech, what is the name of their Nobius? Nobius. Oh, Mobius. Mobius. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm hoping that Mobius, with its years of uh, pain, all the pain's gone. I haven't been involved in it. Connecting know. is very fast. Well, Probably the fastest I've ever used. Well, I, I love connecting lights to Mobius. It's fast. Well, good. Well, that's important um, because the new bars are Mobius as well. Okay. And all uh, all AI lights are convertible or will be convertible to Mobius yep. already, so you can change them over yep. when you need to. So, But I haven't got there yet. But I do, I must say, I do like the new connectivity of most of the things we're bringing up now, mm -hmm. not only theirs, because they're all Bluetooth and then... Uh, and then Wi-Fi makes a difference, which, doesn't which it? is so lovely. Yeah, because you don't have to worry about the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Now I have. It's most of the problems with the Wi-Fi. I have to say this: I'm not the Wi-Fi in the uh, not the Wi-Fi in the appliance. It's the Wi-Fi in your house that you haven't done properly. That's where the problem is. I mean, I heard that problem this morning. I, I think you know where they complained that our, the thing was slow. Well, I've been over with you there when you complained it was slow, were you? No. No, you weren't there. What a shame. Because he said to me, oh, it's very slow. Well, what's very slow is he hasn't put his Wi-Fi right yet. <laughs> That's what's very slow. Right. Because you have to do that. And, and on that note, David Saxby, thank you very much for the interview. Um, thanks for letting us visit and letting us into your home to see your amazing tank. And um, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure meeting you again. It's been great. It brings back old memories. <laughs> <laughs>